two weeks of hype and as the great John Madden used to say it's time for a game to break out <laughs> and not soon enough New England kicking off they won the toss they have deferred so we'll see the Philadelphia offense you've got Warner and Clement back deep Tom Brady over on the sideline Foles will go right to work after the kickoff and with the flash bulbs popping in Minnesota here we go on a line drive kick fielded by Clement at the one yard line to the outside he goes and he gets run out of bounds by Patrick Chung up at the 25 yard line. What a story for Nick Foles. A lot of you have been reading about it hearing about it over the last month or so took over when Carson Wentz got hurt. What an odyssey. But during the postseason he has been tremendous. Started his career with Philadelphia went to the Rams asked for his release spent last year as the backup to Alex Smith in Kansas City and then came here. LeGarrette Blunt starts in the backfield they have three good running backs. Ertz repositions and sets up on the slot to the right. They go right to the air and the pass is caught by Nelson Aguilar for a gain of five up to the 30 yard line tackle there by Kyle Van Noy. Just a little zone defense to start things off for Aguilar and I love what Doug Peterson did instead of coming out and being cautious letting Nick Foles come out and just get settled with a run play come out and throw it right away get him in the game. Matt Patricia who will be named head coach of the Detroit Lions in a couple of days was on the left. Blunt is the back and again a pass out here is caught by Aguilar. Foles ended the championship game by completing his last 15 in a row so that's 17 straight. Yeah and you know he seemed so confident didn't he Al it did not seem too big. He played great in the championship game. I thought his vision his focus down the field some of the scrambles in the pocket were tremendous. And, and you can look at that during the regular season not very good in postseason tremendous postseason the two games against Atlanta and Minnesota from the 32 third down and four balls flushed out keeps his eyes downfield and completes it to Alshon Jeffrey first year with the Eagles came over from the Bears and Philadelphia with the game's first first down. Now Sean Jeffrey who's been coming up big is going to come in loop back out here and because the Patriots had an inside stunt that allowed Nick Foles to scramble just a bit to his left by that extra time. Jeffrey had nine touchdown receptions during the regular season from the 49. Here's their first running play. It's Blunt and he will get stuffed by Kyle Van Noy. Blunt looking for his second Super Bowl ring in a row. Won it with New England last year and then came over to Philadelphia in the offseason. How about this play by Kyle Van Noy? Just hammering off the edge. This is exactly where they're trying to get the run game going. You can see the reduced look inside. Off tackle runs are going to be huge. But if Kyle Van Noy plays like that all night, you could forget that option. Loss of two. Now you've got Jay Ajayi. He was picked up in midseason from Miami. He's in the backfield. And here's the first of the run pass options. The RPOs, as they are called these days, in the pass is incomplete. At the 38 yard line, Torrey Smith could not hold it in. It's third down and 12 for the Eagles. Yeah, for Doug Peterson. He is not going to get beat tonight because he's afraid because he's nervous about his quarterback. We saw it in the championship game. He is going to dial up some shots and we also know from Nick Foles that he likes that style. He does not want to apologize to Bill Belichick or anybody. He's coming out firing. Third and twelve. Foles deep in the pocket fires downfield and that is hold in at the 38 yard line. 
by Torrey Smith the former Raven former 49er tackled there by Eric Rowe a former Eagle gain of 15. You need some time for this one watch the center here Jason Kelsey it looks like he's going to get beat on this stunt but he recovers just in time to allow Foles to make the turn and pick up that first down. Kelsey one of the better athletes that you will find playing that center position. Nice catch. A lot of folks think he is the best center in the league. The jockey in the backfield from the 38 yard line. Again, the RPO and the pass is caught by Ertz, the tight end. He was their leading receiver during the regular season, caught 74 and had eight touchdowns. Yeah, they caught Kyle Van Noy in a coverage where he was going to drop back over the middle. And that time, Nick Foles, who seems to have his eyes working out here you know sometimes Al early in a Super Bowl early in a real pressure situation for the quarterback you don't quite get that focus going but we saw in the championship game and what a drive he's putting together here and there's Carson Wentz who might have been the MVP had he stayed healthy hurt against the Rams in December and that got Foles into the lineup second down and three and this time they hand it to Ajayi on an inside run Ajayi picks up a ton of yardage after contact as does Blunt and a giant kind of worked his way out of Miami. There was uh, a lot of uh, storm and drying down there. We were there in midseason, and uh, you know he has a different idea as to why he was released. The Dolphins will tell you another thing, but Philadelphia thrilled to have him. Al, he is a violent runner. He is a violent finisher. He is the guy that is on the other half of that RPO. If he gets going to the outside, this offense is going to work. Opening drive of the game. This is the ninth play, and there he goes, and he gets tripped up and tackled at the 21. That's Van Noy, already off to a great start, who makes the tackle gain to six, second down and four. So interesting to watch these RPO plays. You'll see the defense basically split. These people going here, they're going there, and it leaves a big gap right up the middle. Once again, Jason Kelsey out front with the key block. Patriots. 29th in yardage allowed defensively, so that was bad. Points allowed only fifth. The old saying, Ben not break, and they've been great in the red zone. Second down and four, a little flip out here to Corey Clement. And Clement gets inside the 10 and sets up a first down and goal. Clement, rookie out of Wisconsin, undrafted. Once again, the stunt catching up. You see the Patriots looping inside, so the perfect play call there by Doug Peterson. And these screens have been fantastic, not just for Nick Foles, but for the Eagles throughout the course of these playoffs. Chris Long reacting as he takes a look at the big screen. Here comes the 11th play of the drive. To the one yard line. He goes. Lawrence Guy makes the tackle there. Now, this is some impressive start, isn't it? Beautiful. I'm for telling Philadelphia. you. Philadelphia. You've got to wonder over there. Bill Belichick and Matt Patricia are probably thinking, oh, that's fantastic. Give them the ball first. We'll get it to start the second half. Nick Foles is going to be nervous. Not yet. Patricia, that familiar red vest. Blunt is the running back. He already has 10 postseason touchdowns in his career. Now you've got our first whistle. So Gene Steratore will take the mic for the first time tonight. False start. Offense number 86. Five yard penalty. Second down. Zach Ertz, the tight end, making it second down and goal. You know, Al, how many times have we talked about this Patriots defense this year? They are the classic, Ben, don't break. You will always pile up a lot of yards against Matt Patricia's defense, but scoring touchdowns, it's a different story. They allowed only six rushing touchdowns all season, second fewest in the league. Now a little fake toss. Foles goes the other way and throws that out of the back of the end zone. Aguilar the closest to it and it will be third down and goal. Just talking about that Patriot defense and how good they have been in the red zone. Fourth in touchdown percentage first in takeaways. Points allowed only 3.9 second best in the league so they give up a ton of yardage 
a lot of it early in the season. Then they got it together and they're very tough down here. Third and goal. Yeah and now you have to start watching the tight end Zach Ertz and you watch Alshon Jeffrey they love those little skinny posts in the back of the end zone thrown up high. That's Ertz back and forth. Off play action to the back of the end zone and broken up there by Rowe. Alshon Jeffrey the intended receiver and it's interesting that Rowe got the start instead of Malcolm Butler tonight. So they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well I think you're going to recognize this name. James Harrison coming off the edge in no way in the world you're going to get a back a Jai to come out there and make that play and then here's Rowe on the back end they try to get it up high let him jump ball but Rowe got just enough of them to not allow that jump to take place good stand there by the Patriots Jake Elliott a rookie had to get him early in the season when Caleb Sturgis got hurt opening day 25 yard attempt is good uh, the Hall of Fame class Randy Moss and the old Eagle Brian Dawkins everybody thrilled about that Ray Lewis is Bobby Beathard and congratulations to him spectacular career as a general manager and down the line we go the brand new Hall of Fame class for 2018. So the Eagles had the ball for almost half the quarter and now a touchback here as Dion Lewis takes a knee. Row with that pass breakup when we come back. Brady and company going to work. Those records figure to stand for a long time. First of all, how many quarterbacks are going to get to play in eight Super Bowl games? The passes, completions, yards, touchdowns. He owns all of those. So Brady, five and two in his seven Super Bowls. His first play tonight from the 25 yard line. They start with a fullback, Devlin. Along with Lewis in the backfield. Off play action, slip it to the other side, and Brandon Cooks incomplete. Bouncing ball, second down and 10. Of course, Tom Brady, 17 days ago, that collision with Rex Burkhead in practice and the gushing cut. He wore that tape during the championship game, but not tonight, Chris. No, he said he was ready to go with it. Might stick a little glue on there just to toughen up that hand. He had a pad on it in the last game, and he felt like that messed with his grip a little bit on the football. So no glove, no tape, nothing. Got used to it by the fourth quarter, though. Yeah. Brady throws, and that'll be caught, and that is James White, who had a tremendous day in the Super Bowl. Last year, he's run out by Jenkins, and that'll be a first down on a gain of 15 yards. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that Jenkins is going to be on white. Watch this in and out route here. It is the quickness of the New England Patriots at the wide receiver position that has taken them in many ways to so many of these championships. To the line quickly, set up a screen, but a flag is down. That's James White making the grab. Might have been 12 guys on the defense. That seems to be the initial call from Gene Steratore. Brady's so good at creating those situations. Defense, 12 men on the field with the snap. Five yard penalty. We play first time. Well, if there's one guy that knows all about Bill Belichick and what he likes to do, it's that guy right there, Jim Schwartz. He basically got his first job with Bill Belichick in Cleveland, and he was offered an unbelievable deal. He got to work 100 hours a week for no pay. And brought coffee to the secretary. That's right. Went shopping for the secretary. Said they were too important. Trips to the right on first down and five. Lewis is the running back. Off play action. Good protection. Wide open. Chris Hogan, who gets inside the 30 and takes the ball down to the Philadelphia 27 yard line. Amon Dolan with a great block, and Brady's going to take him right up to the line after a gain of 28. Yeah and this is going to be an issue I think tonight for the Philadelphia Eagles. This is a team that lost their signal caller in Jordan Hicks. Can they keep up with the pace of Tom Brady. And around give it to Hogan who just made that last catch and he'll get spun out of bounds at about the 23 by Jalen Mills. How about Rob Gronkowski you think he's back from the concussion check this one out. Goodbye. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Super Bowl, rookie Derek Barnett. 
Got hurt. Yeah, got hurt against Jacksonville and didn't pass the concussion protocol until this week. At the 14 days off. Lewis and the fullback Devlin in the backfield on second down and six. Six and a half minutes to go in the quarter. Philadelphia on top three nothing. Brady fires over the middle caught at the 14 yard line. Rob Gronkowski led the team in catches this season. Rodney McLeod makes the stop. First down to England. Play action an issue. You put the big fullback in James Devlin and the middle linebacker reacts and they get in behind him. That is going to be a problem. This defense, especially this run defense of Philadelphia, is predicated on those linebackers coming down hard and making plays in the run game very susceptible to play action. He's put the fullback Devlin out this time. You got White in the backfield. White caught 56 passes this season. And Brady will check it down to him, and the ball at the eight-yard line as he's able to haul it in there. White had 20 points in the Super Bowl last year. Three touchdowns, including the game winner in overtime and a two-point conversion. There's Josh McDaniels, offensive coordinator. In a couple of days, he will be the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, James White has more receptions out of the backfield than all the Eagles running backs combined. Eagles defense, six drives, only one touchdown allowed. Patriots have gotten into the end zone eight times in nine joints and this is white stopped at the line of scrimmage by Nigel Bradham making it third down. Yeah now we come down to it same situation right both teams go up and down the field here are the Patriots now with a third down inside the 10 yard line can they convert. They've run seven plays two runs five passes. Gronkowski split out wide. That's your first option. If in fact he doesn't get help, maybe leaning that way a bit now. Third and four. And they send White into the slot. Brady looks that way, then fires over the middle. Broken up at the goal line. Jalen Mills intended for Gronkowski, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Brady got away with one there. That ball was well behind Gronkowski coming on the slant, coming across the middle. And Mills, I think, if he had been able to get in front just a bit with his other hand, might have had an interception right there. A break for the Patriots. Steven Gostowski in his 12th year in the league. Boy, have they had a pair back to back. Adam Vinatieri there for so long. Gostowski a dozen seasons. 26 yard attempt. Ryan Allen to put it down. And the two teams with similar opening drives, each ending with field goals. 3 3 in Super Bowl 52. Super Bowl 1, you could have gotten into that game for 12 bucks. Robert Kraft, it's the ninth time his team has been to the Super Bowl. Got there once before Brady and Belichick. Jeff Lurie watched his team in 2004 lose in Jacksonville. You did the game on Fox to New England. It was an exciting game then as well. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that first Super Bowl for 12 bucks, you spent 24 bucks on that one, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> 49 yard line seat, it was perfect. Gustiowski to kick off. And this is returnable to Barner from the two yard line. And young Barner back up to the 24. We used to call it the run pass option, but now in the vernacular, RPO. Yeah, and basically all it means is the quarterback has the option. He's going to look at a linebacker or a safety or somebody, and they have gone to that and basically decided that Nick Foles is just so much better running that offense than what he was before. So during the bye week, he was able to make the conversion, and we see the Patriots, they have struggled a bit against it. So Foles going to work here starts the game six of nine for 61 yards Doug Peterson in his second year as the Eagles coach and he calls the play sends him in to Foles who throws over the middle and that is caught and staying on his feet and picking up some extra yardage about eight total is Nelson Aguilar who had two pretty mediocre seasons and then had a breakout year this year. I'll tell you what how about that action after the catch and made somebody miss this team in general is very good at breaking tackles after the catch and there goes 
James Harrison back in coverage. He's going to take a big shot and miss the much shiftier Nelson Aguilar. Harrison, 39 years old, oldest defensive player in the league, long time Pittsburgh Steeler. Blunt is the running back, LeGarrette Blunt over the right side, breaks free into Patriot territory and spun down at the 33 yard line by Duran Harmon. The former Patriot off to the races for 36 yards. Big guys right up here. This is the strength of the offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles on that right side. Nice job by Wisniewski as well coming down and for LeGarrette Blunt. How much do you think he enjoyed that particular run? He was asked to take a bit of a pay cut if he wanted to stay in New England. He said no thanks. I'll take my shot to beat you in Philadelphia. And there's Brandon Graham saluting him from the Eagles sideline ball at the 34. Off play action going for it all into the end zone and it is caught Alshon Jeffrey for the touchdown. He beats Eric Rowe who made the big play on the first drive to hold him to a field goal but not this time the former bear 34 yards and a touchdown and Nick Foles told us he said early in this game I want to be able to take my shot. And there goes his big guy as we have seen these Philadelphia Eagles have a way of playing above the rim. You watch these receivers come on the field. You think you're getting ready to watch an NBA game. They go up box out rebound and they've been putting points on the board with that formula all season long. Every scoring play of course gets reviewed looks pretty good to us from this point. As they check it out. You know the phrase these days, can you survive the ground? Can any of us survive the ground? <laughs> right. <laughs> Not the underside. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go. And you heard Steratore say it's confirmed. So Philly with the game's first touchdown. And Elliott now for the extra point. Jones puts it down and Whoa. that kick is nope. no good. He missed it. Once more the Foles pass into the end zone but they missed the extra point and it's nine to three. Music's biggest moment of the year, the Pepsi Super Bowl 52 halftime show featuring Justin Timberlake, who released his new album, Man of the Woods, this weekend, getting ready to perform at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis as you look at downtown Mini on this frigid Sunday night. Oh, please. Hashtag, yeah. that is taken over the world, by yeah, the way. I, oh, Ev everywhere. Please. That's everywhere. You already did a little dance and you thought you got out of it no. in the pregame show. I'm just telling you right now. Your hashtag has flown around the world and back 25 times. That is a career ender. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. One yard line, Dion Lewis. He'll bring it back to the 19 yard line. Tackled by Good. Is a man down for the Patriots at the 25 yard line. Jeff Lurie. Exultant along with the actor Bradley Cooper. So Brady goes to work, second possession. Lewis is the tailback. Through the middle, breaks a tackle and picks up about eight yards getting to the 26 yard line. But one of the things you have to do is slow down the pass rush of this team. One of the great ones, Fletcher Cox right there. They're going to trap him early. Why do you do that? To give him a lot of different looks inside. You don't want him just flying up the field and getting after Tom Brady. Nice play call. Whoops. Second and two, and that's Gronkowski moving around, and that'll cost him five yards. <laughs> False start. Offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's the first penalty against the Patriot offense in this entire postseason. I think Gene Steratore has more fun at football than you do. He does. Brought his index card tonight. <laughs> yeah, had us sign it. He'll always. He did. <laughs> the one that 
Got the first down for Dallas against Oakland in December. Second down and seven. Brady stays in the pocket and then the pass is incomplete. Tended there for Chris Hogan, covered well. Third down and seven. One of the big matchups on the outside is going to be Vinnie Curry going against Nate Solder at that left tackle position. You know the Patriots are going to want to try and help inside where Fletcher Cox and company, Brandon Graham, can really cause some damage in there. So that means probably Nate Solder has to stand up all night. We'll take Chris Long, number 56, into the defensive front. James White is the back. Brady under pressure slips away deep downfield and getting free is Danny Amendola and breaking tackles and taking it all the way to the 29 yard line. Danny playoff Amendola is his new nickname. There we go right down the sidelines going to be right there and this is just a blown coverage you saw Ronald Darby moving inside it was a zone defense and Tom Brady knew it. His wide receivers on the outside flip flop spots. The Eagles didn't adjust. He knew exactly what he had. A minute to go now in the quarter from the 29 yard line. Ball play action. Fires caught. Hogan backhands it and picks up a first down on the gain at 12 to the 17 yard line. Tackled there by Corey Graham. Well, we have seen this Eagles defense all season long lead the league. Highest percentage of three and outs, and yet they are really struggling with this pace of Tom Brady. No huddle again. Big hole again. To the 11 yard line. We've had a lot of offense. I mean, we haven't even played a quarter. New England has 149 yards, and New England, uh, or Philadelphia has 149, and New England has 138. And Tom Brady is like, do not get in arguments or fights out here on the field. I, these guys are tired. Let's wear them down. Get out of those altercations. Don't let them rotate. Second and four. Slipping through the middle, taking it to the eight, and that'll take us to the end of the quarter. James White is there. So the next period begins with a third down and one. End of one, nine, three. Philadelphia Super Bowl 52 and NBC continues after these messages. Second quarter, Al Michaels, Chris Collins, with Michelle DeFoya. There are your stats. The update there with 289 yards of total offense, and each quarterback has thrown for over 100 yards already. Right now, it is third down and two. As we begin the second frame, Brandon Bolden comes into the game, and now they move him into the backfield behind Brady. And the ball is handed off to Brandon Cooks, who tries to hurdle and can't. Tackled by McLeod. So Cooks, who came over in a trade with the Saints in the offseason, on the end around McLeod is right there. Jet sweep's going to come right over here, and this is the first time I've ever seen a straddle into a tackle. He tries to jump and split, and he just does not get there. So once again, the Eagles' defense makes a very unique stand this time inside the 10-yard line. Edwin Moses or Ronaldo Nehemiah, that was not. Woo! Kostowski for a 26-yard field goal attempt, which is juggled, and then he... Hits the upright. Cardona was the snapper. So each team has missed a kick. Philadelphia an extra point. And New England missing a field goal attempt. It's going to be bobbled inside somehow. Allen gets it back on the tee. And Goskowski tried it, tried to slide back to the right, but caught the upright. And for Bill Belichick, what a disappointment. He was telling us he felt like that special teams were the strength of this team. And that one hurts. Special teams coach Joe Judge. Mm. Doesn't see that very often. Peterson loves it, of course. And it's nine to three. Boy, remember that tackle on a third and two to set up that field goal, to set up that miss. 
from now from the 20 yard line. Nick Foles, who is 8 of 11 for 102 yards, and tosses it to a giant trying to get around the corner, runs into his own man, and that's a tough two yards. He's second down and eight. One of about three really core defenses. You're going to see these three guys playing inside. So now you run off tackle or you run outside or you throw the football. And so the Philadelphia Eagles and Jay Ajayi. And now I thought one of the huge things that came out of this trade with Ajayi was the fact that it gave them that outside speed. The Garrett Blount, we saw him run up the middle. He's a big, strong guy. But Ajayi's speed has really made a difference on this Eagles team. Second down and eight from the 22. And full surveying under pressure. Looked out. And he throws that one away. Seems like a million years ago. We were there opening night in Fox. Remember how it started? Everybody thought New England did so much during the offseason. They might have a perfect season. That ended in three hours. Yeah, that was pretty uh, short lived there. But this is a defense for the New England Patriots that has made tremendous strides. Gave up 32 points a game the first four games of the season, 300 yard passers the first six, and yet they pieced it all back together. And now the pressure's on to find some answers here tonight. Started two and two and counting postseason, they've won 13 of their last 14. Only a Monday night loss at Miami, the only blemish. Third down and eight. Foles backing up, backing away, escaping, keeps his eyes downfield. The pass is incomplete at the 30 yard line. Tended for Ertz. Philly crowd wants a flag and don't get one fourth down. Yeah, I think that Nick Foles had a chance here. Let's take a look. It's man coverage, so everybody's chasing everybody here. He escapes. Look out to the right. Probably would have run for the first down. So the first three and out. Donnie Jones, 14 years in the league, first time he's been in the Super Bowl. The clock is down to two. Both punters in this game, left footed, and that's fair caught at the 37 yard line by Danny Amendola. Early in the second, Eagles by six. The Eagle D, they're the first team since the 02 Buccaneers to reach the Super Bowl after allowing fewer than 10 points per game in the playoffs. Those were the 2002 Buccaneers, coached by John Gruden, who went to Tampa Bay that year and turned around and beat his old team, Oakland, in the Super Bowl in San Diego. And then went back. Yes, he did. It's good to have him back. I heard he's back. Yeah. Deion Lewis is the running back. Is this drive starts from the 37 yard line. Brady stepping up. Deep downfield, wide open. Brandon Cooks. And he gets smacked down at the 40 yard line, taking some shot there by Jenkins, who was spinning around and he is down. You know, Brady was uh, bent over a little bit during the commercial break. First down and 10, but Tom, none the worse for wear, throws. Almost picked there by Malcolm Jenkins, intended for James White, second down and 10. Boy, this was a bit of a surprise for me that Malcolm Jenkins is coming out and playing man-to-man -man on James White. Well, he caught 14 passes in the last Super Bowl. Maybe it shouldn't be a surprise. But I think most people anticipated that Jenkins was going to be on Gronkowski. But so far, that matchup is working in the Eagles' favor. Meanwhile, McDaniels and company have to wonder about Cooks, the number two receiver. They have only four wideouts dressed for the game. He's one of them. And through the middle, nice gain there. Helmet flying. Deion Lewis picks up about five. You take a look at Brady to Cooks. He was the deep threat. Picked him up in a trade with New Orleans more than 20 yards downfield, 16 completions. Brady's most by one teammate in a season. Yeah, the next closest, to give you some perspective, was Randy Moss in that unbelievable year he had. He did not match that number of Cooks. Philip Dorsett will take his spot. Cooks his spot, number 13. Meanwhile, third down and five here. And now you got to flip back here to Danny uh -oh. Amendola and throws, and it's Brady who can't 
pull it in. So Brady was free, looks over his shoulder, trickery and deceit, fourth down. Has to be out of the shotgun or this play is not legal. It obviously is. Tom Brady is just going to hand off and then ignore. He's not doing anything, and there he goes. And immediately Chris Long knew he was in trouble, and Brady with the bad hand and no tape. You wonder if maybe that had a little something to do with why he didn't want that pad on that hand. They had that play in the back of their mind. You do. So it's fourth down and five. They'll go for it from the 35 yard line. And Brady down the sideline, and that's incomplete. Gronkowski, the intended receiver. Jalen Mills covering on the play, and Philadelphia will take over. 11.53 to the half, 9 to 3, Philly. What's really interesting here, Malcolm Butler, hero three years ago in the Super Bowl, has not played a defensive snap tonight. The Patriots are telling us a coach's decision. Of course, it was easier to get information out of East Germany before the wall went down than to get injury information from New England. But Butler has not played a defensive snap yet. Eric Rowe has taken his spot. Here's a giant. It's wrapped up one yard behind the line of scrimmage. This was during America the Beautiful. Butler was very emotional on the sideline. I can't guess what this was about, but he's played on special teams tonight, but not on defense. Well, it was a beautiful rendition, so <laughs> you never know, right? But you have to think that maybe he was hurting a bit, and you just wonder when it was that he got the news, or maybe it was just a reaction to it, and maybe it wasn't any of the above. Final year of his contract, but for a while as if he would be sent to the Saints in the offseason. Didn't happen. Here's a jockey trying to break tackles, which he does with regularity, and turns nothing into a little something up at the 38 yard line. Devin McCourty makes the tackle. Third down and seven. I tell you, this Jay Ajayi runs that lead draw about as well as anybody. They end up pulling Lane Johnson around, one of the most athletic guys. In blocking him in there but so far this five man line of the New England Patriots has been doing pretty well at least in the last couple of series now and shutting down that run. Ajayi averaging three yards per tote third down and seven now from the 38 yard line. Foles over the middle and wide open and into Patriot territory goes Zach Ertz the tight end. In a 19. Yeah, I think Zach Ertz took a little page out of Gronk's book here. Going to go down the field a little bit physical and then make the break. A little bit of a contact, not enough for a flag. I think that was the proper call there, a little juke. And I tell you, if there's one guy that could be an explosive element of this game, Zach Ertz. His wife, Julie, if you follow soccer, you know she's a key member of that U.S. women's team. From the 43 yard line. Bowles keeps it and then didn't have a grip on it. It looked like Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, will be second down and 10. You got to work to overthrow Alshon Jeffrey. And sometimes it's interesting. I wonder if it happened to Nick there that sometimes those running backs don't know if they're getting the ball or not, and they can tend to grab at it a little bit. Maybe it jostled it just a bit before that throw. It looked like he didn't have a good grip on it, so it's second down and 10. U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis on this Super Bowl Sunday night. Second down, 10 from the 43 yard line. Pressure coming, and that pass intended for Jeffrey at the 21 yard line. Great catch. Over the shoulder. Along the sideline, threw it over Stefan Gilmore. That's a gain of 22, first down. Yeah, watch this late adjustment to the ball here. And Al, I'm a little surprised 
Chung that time ended up being on Alshon Jeffrey, and we all anticipated that Stephon Gilmore was going to be the matchup. Gilmore all season long has taken the bigger of the receivers, and yet for whatever reason, they're not matching him against Jeffrey in this one. He already has one long touchdown, big play there. Two touchdowns in the championship game against Minnesota. Blunt is in the backfield. Garrett Blunt swings to the outside, inside the 10, Blunt to the end zone. Behind a Selleck block, his 11th career postseason TD. Most athletic center in football, watch him get out in front of this play, not only gets the initial cutoff, which you have to have on those outside zones, stays with it, one more push down the field, gets a Landon Roberts out of the way, and there you go. For LeGarrette Blunt, how sweet is this payback? Now they're going to go for two. Right after missing the extra point, that makes the difference. Trying to make it 17 to three instead of 16. Eagles go for it a lot, six of nine for two-point conversions, both most attempts and conversions in the league. So from the two-yard line, now they sent four receivers out to the right side. Whole bunch there. Naturally, you go to the left, and it's Jeffrey, and he can't make the catch. That's Eric Rowe able to bust it up. 8:48 to go, first half. Now 15 to three, Philadelphia. Well, you recognize J Lo and A Rod taking in the action. Mike Trout, the great. Uh, California Angel, huge Eagle fan, goes to all their games. There he is. You know you're a fan when you're standing up the whole game. Love it. From the 25-yard line, the back is Burkhead. Double fake, and then Burkhead makes the catch, and Rex Burkhead gets free. Has a block from Amendola out in front, but getting it from behind is Corey Graham. So they put Burkhead in the game, and right off the bat, He's good for 47. A lot of pressure around Tom Brady, but just enough distraction. Just as that defense thought they were going to get number 12, he flips it out and another big play down the field. 29, off play action. Brady under pressure, and the wobbly pass is incomplete. You know, it was Burkhead, as we take a look at the replay, it was Burkhead who makes the catch here. He was the guy that collided with Brady 17 days ago which caused the massive cut. We asked Brady about that the other day. We said what was your first thought. He said my season is over. And Burkhead probably thought his career was <laughs> over. <laughs> right. Second down and 10 from the 29 yard line. Danny Amendola and he'll get stuffed before he can get untracked. Making it third down and eight. Now they've worked this play a couple of times and they've whistled it right past the ear hole of Vinnie Curry twice. He might end up intercepting one. You can see Brady didn't even have the laces. That is the second one he has barely missed. They are trying to slow down this pass rush. These hits are starting to pile up just a bit on Tom Brady. Went five wide initially. Now White comes into the backfield. Third and eight. Amendola comes into the backfield and that pass goes nowhere. So a lot of action, a lot of movement, nothing. Fourth and eight. I mean, these are screen passes that they can't get off. Chris Long comes flying around the end there. And for Josh McDaniels, he has to think, well, I knew these guys were going to be pretty good coming after my quarterback, but I didn't think it'd get to the point where we couldn't run a screen pass. There he was. Making a play on the outside against James White had to throw it away. Now a 45 yard attempt. Kaskowski. This time the snap is good. Hold is perfect. And the kick is likewise. Halfway through the second quarter, it's Philadelphia 15. New England 6 in Super Bowl 52. Back with the score 15 to 6. And we talked about New England. Perfect season one away on opening night. They still wound up 
with a mark of 13 and 3. Tom Brady going over things with McDaniels, and we go to Michelle. Well, Brandon Cooks, the Patriots wide receiver who took that hard hit from Malcolm Jenkins, went back to the locker room. Al, he will not return. They are calling it a head injury. They haven't called it a concussion, just a head injury. Back in the locker room, will not return, Al. Mm -hmm. So they're down to three wide receivers, Michelle. You know, Chris, we were talking about how New England season started, but they rebounded. You look at Philadelphia's season. I mean, they were 7 and 9 last year. They started out a house on fire. They were number one in a lot of the power polls until they went to Los Angeles and lost Carson Wentz in December. Yeah, and to be fair, we saw a couple of good games out of Nick Foles, and then at the end of the season, two very poor games. And then it was Doug Peterson and Frank Reich, both of whom had been backup quarterbacks for extended periods of their careers, going back, having that extra week, and taking a good long look at what it was that Nick Foles did in 2013 with Chip Kelly that was so successful. They incorporated some of that, and then by the time the playoffs started, he was rolling. So Frank Reich, author of two of the greatest comebacks in football history, one in college in Maryland, and of course, one with the Buffalo Bills against the then Houston Oilers. A little surprise he didn't get some action in the head coaching derby. Sooner or later. Koski's kick is taking two yards into the end zone. So let's look at the quarterbacks to this point in the game. 143 yards off the hand of Foles and 191 already for Tom Brady. You know what's the most bizarre stat not shown there? Maybe the biggest play? One drop by yeah, Tom Brady. By, by Brady. Go figure. On the pass from Amendola. Brian Hoyer, his backup quarterback, going over the tablet with him. So here is Foles, almost quit, almost quit after he was released by the Rams, went on a camping trip with his brother-in-law, and said when he was going to come back, he, there was only one guy he was going to play for, Andy Reid. And Reid brought him to Kansas City last year and backed up Alex Smith. From the 25 yard line. And you got movement. Ertz. Second time Ball for him. Start. Offense number 86. Five yard penalty. First down. Yeah, he took him from the two yard line to the seven yard line on the other fall start. Yeah, and that one took probably four points off the board there with that one. But believe me, Zach Ertz. And these inside receivers, I keep thinking this is going to be an inside game throwing the ball. The other one, Nelson Aguilar, inside as well. On first and 15, Clement picks up one. Clement getting an opportunity to play a lot this season when they lost Darren Sproles to a season ending injury in week three. Undrafted rookie out of Wisconsin has done a great job. Well, I don't know how many times we've done this with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but James Harrison, you want somebody to set the edge on your defense, and of course that's the very fundamental part of Bill Belichick's defenses. Who better than that guy? He is a hammer. You see him lift weight sometime. Second and 14. Harrison, 39 years old, and says he's still playing next year. Foles gets it away. Caught. It's Torrey Smith spins his way up to the 31 yard line. Tackle there by Gilmore. It makes it third down and three. I love what Nick Foles is doing. Sees the blitz, throw it right behind it. If you see the blitz coming, just throw it right over his head. There he is. Nice pickup. Nick Foles is seeing the field. Mm hmm. Third down call at four. Six minutes to go in the opening half. Ajayi on an inside handoff. Look at him go. Jay Ajayi to the 40 yard line. Knee goes down there. Tons of yardage. He and Blunt both. Massive amounts of yardage after contact. Case in point there. 
third and four. How many times do you see? Here's Wisniewski right here, but also on the outside, we had Nelson Aguilar with a great block. But how many times, Al, have we seen this year? Doug Peterson on third and four. It's a pass down for everybody in the league. Pick up big plays running the football like he just did. He's got those two backs from the 44 on first down. Foles going deep down the sideline, and it is juggled and intercepted by Harmon at the three-yard line. Jeffrey couldn't handle it, and New England gets the takeaway on a deflection into the arms of Harmon. First turnover of the game. He couldn't one-hand it. New England has the ball. Two college roommates from South Carolina going at it on that last play. Stephon Gilmore finally got his shot against Alshon Jeffrey. Good coverage, but Jeffrey really is the one that's going to flip it back to the middle of the field to Deron Harmon, who led this team with four interceptions. Career high for him, but watch the tail end of this. He's got it maybe, and then just flips it back to the middle of the field, and Harmon said thank you very much. Exactly what the Patriots needed. They start this drive from their own 10 yard line. Lewis is the running back behind Devlin, the fullback, and he gets crunched after a game of four by Kendricks. And we go to Michelle. Well, I spoke with both Alshon Jeffrey and Stefan Gilmore before the game. You know, Jeffrey was Gilmore's uh, a groomsman in his wedding. They each talked about the fun they had in college competing. But this is their first meeting as pros, and Jeffrey told me their battle tonight would be a good one, but he said it's been a long time since college, and I'm pretty sure he got better just like I got better, Al. No question, Jeffrey. Already off to a good start with a touchdown and three catches for 73. Second down now and six from the 14-yard line. Brady over the middle, and that's dropped at the 19-yard line. Incomplete. Gronkowski could not handle it. Gronkowski's caught one tonight for nine yards. That's it. Yeah, this has been a little bit of an unusual game. And I think that right now the Patriots have to reconsider a little bit what they're doing. Gronkowski needs more. And I think these backs need a little more action coming out of the backfield. James White's going to come out wide. But once again, Malcolm Jenkins on him. Maybe not quite the matchup that Brady liked with Jenkins. Third and six, fired, that's incomplete. Flag comes in though, Chris Hogan with Jalen Mills on the coverage. First flag on a pass play. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 31. Five yard penalty, automatic, first down. Here's the matchup right inside there going across. Let's take a look and see if Mills hooks that hip and turns him. That's what they're going to call, I believe. There's the hold. Yeah, that well, was a choke hold, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. And it's a first down after a third and six. And now scooting up to the 25-yard line goes Dion Lewis. He was their leading rusher this year with 896 yards. Second and five. Well, we've talked about him before, but Fletcher Cox, just one of the real stars in the National Football League. And the thing, Al, that I appreciate more than anything about him, he's not just a pass rusher. That guy has a way of finding the ball carrier, devastating initial punch, and then finds the ball carrier. To the outside, picking up the first down. Up to the 32 goes Deion Lewis. Devlin with the block. Yeah, there's a reason why Cox is the highest paid guy on the team. You don't see that very often for an interior defensive lineman. Yeah, we've got a few good ones around the league. Aaron Donald named the defensive player of the year, right? And this guy is pretty much right there behind him. We haven't seen a ton from Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham is the leading sacker on this team and a guy that gets a lot of pressure as well. This defensive line now, these are some of the moments they need to win the battle. Graham had nine sacks during the regular season, but there he was on the sideline. First down now. Play clock at one. Brady with good protection throws into traffic, and that's incomplete. Well covered. Rodden McLeod 
on Gronkowski to make it second down and 10. Interesting. I that was sort of a bang bang play right at the top end of that route. Let's watch McLeod come down. I think they're going to say he's going for the ball. And there have been a few like that. It is always so difficult. They are not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Not in the Super Bowl. White is the back on second and ten. He stays in the block. Brady going deep down the right side right for Hogan who rolls it in at the 25 yard line. Got past Jalen Mills. Another big play for Hogan. Anytime the Patriots want to go down the field they're going to chip with these guys on the outside to buy Brady a little more time. And I've been waiting for this one to happen because the New England Patriots knew that Jalen Mills has given up a lot of these double moves on the season. A little hesitate and go and now the Patriots have a great long drive going. Gain of 43. Hogan's already caught three for 83. Brady's thrown for 234 to this point. Big hole left side. James White inside the 10 takes it to the end zone. Touchdown Patriots. 26 yards 90 yard drive kept alive by a holding penalty and in they go in seven plays really nice job anytime you get big runs you need plays on the back side watch Shaq Mason here go get the linebacker watch Cameron Fleming with the cutoff block on Jernigan and that is going to allow James White to get in the open field and that guy just keeps doing it. Super Bowls. Holy smokes. That's seven touchdowns for White in his last four postseason games. The extra point is no good. Go figure. We've met two missed extra points in a field goal. And with 204, it's 15 to 12. Once again, go back to the snap. Good. Hold looked pretty good. Looked like there was a little bobble on the tail end of that hold and maybe just a half a. Oh boy. You know, and when something goes wrong early, kind of gets you in your head a little bit. And now you have to wonder, should this thing come down? See that little readjust right in the last second? But now you start to think, boy, this looks like it's going to be one of those back and forth close games that the Patriots always seem to play. Well, now we're confident they are kicking those field goals now. Hmm. Four seconds from the two minute warning. 15 12. Clement and Barner. This time it is Barner. And Barner with a nice run back, and then he gets popped by Gaskowski. Kicker knocks him down. Two minute warning. Eagles by three. Downtown Minneapolis. This building on the old footprint of the Metrodome. Tore that down. They played for two years over at the University of Minnesota Stadium. Architectural marvel built in the uh, shape and image. The Viking ship, home of the Vikings. Doug Peterson is getting ready to unleash right here. And Foles flips one that's caught by Ertz. He gets run out of the bounds after a gain of seven yards by Jordan Richards, second down and three. We've seen the Patriots play from behind a lot, right? They did against Jacksonville in the championship game, of course, the Super Bowl last year and I think everybody in the National Football League especially Doug Peterson has been watching and they know they have to play this one all the way out like they're either tied or behind and they will be firing here. Second down and three. Foles to this side hold in 47 yard line but incomplete didn't get to the ground with it. Torrey Smith couldn't complete the process. Eric Rowe with the coverage makes it third down and three. That's why you keep playing. Watch Rowe here. Just keep fighting and keep fighting as he's going to the ground. The ball comes out.
It's a good call. At least under the old yep. rules. We'll see what the new rules are going to be. Who knows? That's a big drop, though. Mm -hmm. That should have been a first down. Yeah, they don't want to give New England the ball back and have them go down the field. New England's going to get the second half kicked off as well. Third and three. And that is floated and caught down the sideline by Clement. Corey Clement breaks the tackle inside the 20. Makes it first down and goal. A little floater. Perfect touch. Corey Clement for 55 yards. Jordan Richards overly aggressive gets hit with the swing route right there. They're going to try and pick inside. Didn't have to, but you could tell that Richards felt like with that possible pick coming, he had to loop underneath, and that's what created the opening out there for Clement. Harmon could not make the tackle. He got stiff armed. Ball is at the nine yard line. Look at that. Over 600 total yards in the game. Under a minute. Through the middle. Still on his feet. Clement. Boy, he's the third down back, but he's been a bull here at second down and goal. And Brady with Belichick. Timeout is taken here. You know, this is a stuff. This, this is a stuff. They should have had this for about a two-yard game, but Clement just kept driving, and he is really making a statement so far in this game. He got a lot of practice time this week because of the ankle injury to Jay Ajayi, and he's been sensational. He really has come on here at the end of the season. The timeout was taken by New England, trying to conserve some time if they can get the ball back and limit it maybe to a field goal. Second down and goal. Well, you know, you know what the Patriots love, those double ups, right? Get the ball at the end of the half and yep. then be able to take advantage. And certainly they hurt Jacksonville with that score at the end of the half in the championship game. Now they've got the full house backfield going, but I bet they shift. Check this out, at least for the moment. A lot of shifting. Yeah, but Aguilar is still in the backfield. With Clement. And with Clement playing the role of fullback. He's going to get to the one yard line. It'll be third down and goal, and another timeout is taken here by New England. Toyota halftime report coming up. Guys break down the first half. Tell you what each team needs to do in the second half. Coming up at the half. In addition, of course, to Justin Timberlake. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. as much as everybody wants to hear what they have to say. They might be hanging around for Justin Timberlake. And, and what you're going to do at halftime. Oh, no, 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 no. Huh? No, there's no, no the challenge. Hashtag Al Michaels. I can shake, see. Shake your booty. No. no, not going for it. Justin's killing me, I'm telling you. Mm. Doesn't go with spinal stenosis, you know. <laughs> Big moment right here. Third down and goal from the one. Five receivers. And coverage. Watch the picks. And to the outside, and Jeffrey gets taken down in the end zone by Gilmore, and no flag. So fourth and goal. Let's take a look right there, just one on one on the outside. I don't think there's enough action there. I thought that's a good call. Looked a little bit more like Jeffrey was just falling back for the ball. Peterson wanted a call and did not get it. Are they really going to go for well, this? Well, they're lining up to go for it anyway from the one yard line with 38 seconds. Whoa, baby. He's a gambler. And they're good at two point conversions. They probably have a play they really like. Philadelphia, 30 second timeout. Taking a look at what how the Patriots were lining up 17 fourth down conversions. That's the most by any team in almost a decade, one for one in the two playoff games. Doug Peterson, what a job he has done. Long time backup. Dan Marino is in front of him in Miami, and then for many years, Brett Favre on Andy Reid's staff when he got into coaching in the NFL. 
decade ago he's coaching high school in Louisiana. This is an unbelievable call. This is like going for the onside kick against Peyton Manning because you don't want him to get the ball too many times. You don't think you can hold him out. And here we go. This could decide the game. Fourth and goal. Uh -oh. And they're going to snap it. And it's Trey Burton who throws caught. Foles touchdown. How do you figure? They go to the very, very, very back of the playbook for the touchdown. Trey Burton, a college quarterback, and watch all the action. Foles is going to sneak over here, direct snap, everybody comes up, and here we go. What a play call by Doug Peterson. This play call has a chance to be remembered as one of the all-time greats just going for it and to complete the pass that the Patriots could not. Wow. To Burton, to Foles, Elliott for the extra point. Wow. 34 seconds. What a call. That's Deuce Staley, longtime running back coach. Here we go. They've got all these signals. Shotgun, he would not have been eligible, but for the fact he was in the shotgun, not under center. And there's the old basketball player. They talk about Nick Foles. He's more comfortable playing quarterback like a point guard. And here he is receiving the pass that is going to be shown a billion times. There's Mike Trapp of the California Angels, the LA Angels of Anaheim. You know, Chris, we started out by talking about, as you look at Patricia on the other side, about Doug Peterson. He's going to be aggressive. That's as aggressive as you could possibly be. You go for him on the fourth down with the all time trick play. One of the all time gutsy calls right there. You don't make that, give it back to Brady right there. That was second guess forever. What a call. Down in the end zone here. So. The Patriots are going to get it with 34 seconds trying to at least to get into field goal range. One timeout. So the pass to Brady did not work. The pass to Foles did. We saw it. They had their own trick play. Set it up perfectly. Had Brady wide open. Could not make the play. And on the other end, much younger, Nick Foles did. Breathtaking. That's <laughs> breathtaking. In a Super Bowl. That's a breathtaking call. 323 yards in the first half for Philadelphia. So Brady with a little time to try to get him down the field. Protection is outstanding. Deep down the field into double coverage and incomplete. Intended for Danny Amendola. You had Mills back there with Corey Graham. That took seven seconds off the clock, second down. Anytime, if you're going to take away Gronkowski, you have to take away this seam route. Look at all the action out here, and I think it's making Brady crazy. This is their go-to play when you're talking about Gronkowski, and yet they have been right underneath it all night long. It's a good play there by Amendola just to break up the interception. Brady hitting only 50 percent 10 to 20 but for 234 and he fires and that's going to be hauled in at the 45 yard line. Philip Dorsett makes his first catch and New England will take its final timeout with 20 seconds. Well you have to remember now what the loss of Brandon Cooks is going to mean to this team. Nick Foles over there enjoying that little play but you've got Brandon Cooks who was the best deep threat had the most yards of any deep threat in the National Football League over the last two years and they made the deal to bring in Philip Dorsett to this team. He's a very similar player but doesn't have anywhere close to the skill set or the experience that Brandon Cooks has. They'll have to play the whole second half the rest of the game without Cooks. He's he's gone. They played the entire second half against Jacksonville two weeks ago without Gronkowski and still pulled it out. First down. Brady under pressure gets jostled. Now he's going to take off. Can't get to the sideline. 
Tackle there by Brandon Graham, Michigan against Michigan. They got to race up to the line and maybe spike it and then throw a Hail Mary because the clock is now down to five, four, and he just spikes it there. Too far, of course, for a field goal. One last probable Hail Mary with three seconds. Yeah, unfortunately, they had Chris Hogan all the way down the field there, and he had to hustle all the way back. And being short at wide receiver, maybe they didn't have the natural substitution pattern that they might have had to leave a little more time on that clock. I tell you, we've seen all the trick plays coming out here. I don't know what we're going to get here, but we'll see. Remember, a defensive foul would extend the half. Yeah, and Doug Peterson wanted to talk about it. He knew something strange was coming. Boy, what a first half. Yeah, this has it's been, been crazy. It's been very entertaining. Just fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you know, all of the talk before the game and everybody's, you know, yakking away and the stories and all of that. Who could have predicted this? I, you know, we have seen the underdog Philadelphia Eagles all season long. That little chip on their shoulder wearing the dog mask. They have worn that well. Patriots came in. They were awfully confident about this game. But it has been the big plays that have really eluded the Patriots just a bit. And the Eagles have made them, and that's been the difference. Well, they've relished that underdog role. They were the one seed, and they were an underdog to the six Atlanta in the divisional playoff. Half ends here, barring a defensive foul. And New England will get the ball to start the second half. Send it out here to Danny Amendola. And that will take us to halftime. 276 passing yards for Brady in the half. 215 for Foles. The Philadelphia Eagles trying to win for the first time ever. Trying to win the big game for the first time ever. Belichick back to the locker room to begin to make his adjustments, which he makes all game long. And he's pretty good at halftime, too. I'll say. 28 to 3 last time around they came back and won. 10 point deficit, nothing. Let's go to Michelle. All right, with Coach Doug Peterson, fourth and goal from the one. You call a play that results in a touchdown pass, two foals. What inspired the decision to go for it with that call? Well, we had just gone all the way down the field, and I wasn't going to stop. I wasn't going to let our offense be stopped on the one yard line. It's a play we've been working the last couple of weeks, and uh, our guys executed brilliantly. No lead is safe against Tom Brady. What's your message to your team at halftime? We got 30 minutes of football. We're, we're, we got to we got to refuel. We got to recharge, and we got to play for another 30 minutes. This is a they're too good on that side of the, uh, that side of the field, and uh, message is we got to play play for another 30 minutes. Coach, thank you. Thank you, Al. All right, Michelle. Well, Sean McVay won the honor, but Doug Peterson, I'm sure, came close in the Coach of the Year balloting. Thank you. Going for it all into the end zone, and it is caught. Alshon Jeffrey for the touchdown. Great catch over the shoulder. Big play there. Swings to the outside, blunt to the end zone. For LeGarrette Blunt, how sweet is this payback? Big hole left side, James White. Inside the 10, takes it to the end zone. Trey Burton, who throws, caught. Foles, touchdown. Wow. <laughs> About as entertaining a first half as you can possibly see. 22 to 12, Philadelphia on top at the break. First Super Bowl, both teams each gain 300 or more yards in the first half. Foles and Brady, first Super Bowl each quarterback, passing for 200 or more in the first half. Foles, the first ever in 52 Super Bowls, first ever quarterback to catch a touchdown pass. Nine different players with a rush or a catch of 20 plus yards. Plenty of offense, 673 yards 
worth of offense against one team that was number four in defensive scoring and the other team number five. We're just warming up Al. Here we go. Second half in Minneapolis underway and New England will take a knee there. Deion Lewis we go to Michelle. Well, I got a chance to speak with Bill Belichick and I asked him why he did not start Malcolm Butler and why Butler's not playing on defense and he said I made the decisions that give us the best chance to win and as far as trying to stop their run he said we got to do better in all phases Al. All right. A little bit more semantic Samba there right from Bill. What else is new? That was about what we expected. Of course. Thank yep. you Michelle. <laughs> from the 25 yard line. Brady begins this drive. Tom, 12 of 23. Play action. Fires and errant. Intended for Gronkowski. Can't connect with him. Gronkowski tonight, one catch for nine yards, period. Brady's missing these throws. This is wide open. Here's the seam against the single safety look. This is their bread and butter. This is Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. 25 throws out of 25 they're going to hit that and we have seen tonight Tom Brady missed some of these throws I don't know if his hands an issue but he has missed some throws tonight playing without that tape tonight white is the back again cooks out of the game head injury lost in the first half Brady stepping up avoids the pressure throws and this time it is caught by Gronkowski he gets free. First down, Graham with the tag, 25 yards. Let's take a look at Rob Gronkowski in the first half. He's had plenty of opportunities and just not been able to come up with some of those trademark big plays. That last one thrown a bit behind. That was a back shoulder. But it has been this Eagles defense that has continued to make big plays. Take the inside handoff. Brady throws, and that's Gronkowski. So back to back to him after that one catch in the first half. He scored two in a row. Graham makes the tackle, and that's good for 24. If at first you don't succeed, it's the exact same play. Exact same play. And if you think they're going to call Gronkowski on that little nudge, forget about it. 325 passing yards now for Brady. White slicing through over the left side to the 23-yard line. You know, it's so interesting. Doug Peterson probably looked at the scoreboard. See, it's like everybody's okay getting up. Probably looked at the scoreboard when he made that decision to go for it on fourth and one down there and said with the way these guys start the second half I'm going to be behind by the time I get the ball back. So he went for it. I still can't get over that. That was so bold. Gutsy is gutsy a call as you'll see. But Doug's been doing that a good part of the season. Shook it down in six. Brady good protection again and throws that one out of bounds intended for devil in the fullback and complete third down and six. That was nice on the outside there by Malcolm Jenkins. They've been setting that play up with James White flanked out wide. He's going to fake like he's going to go in for the pick. Jenkins did not fall for it. So folks so far the decision by Jim Schwartz to take Malcolm Jenkins out there on James White has been paying dividends. They've got Gronkowski split wide to the left on third and six. Brady firing in that direction, hits him, and Gronk gets it inside the 10, takes Graham with him, sets up a first down and goal. Yeah, and Brady saw the pressure that time and knew he was going to get the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and took advantage. That was one of the few pressures we've seen so far out of the Philadelphia Eagles. Opening drive of the second half. This is the seventh play. Breaking the tackle, taking it down to the five yard line goes James White to make it second down and goal. You know, if you're wondering about the strategy, think back to what happened to the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl last season. Of course, they wore down late and in overtime looked exhausted. But this Philadelphia defense can go about seven or eight deep along that defensive line. Shouldn't happen to this bunch. Four man rush, and then it's caught. Gronkowski for the touchdown. 
So he goes from a silent night to a big drive here and gets in for the score. Now they're starting to get the combination going. He's going to fake outside, come back inside. Darby's going to slip just a bit, but now the combination. You go back to that game against the Pittsburgh Steelers when everything was on the line, and what did Tom Brady do? He just went after Gronkowski almost every single throw. Goskowski for the extra point. So Gronkowski catches four passes on that drive. They quickly go 75 and turn it into a three point game in Minneapolis. Most championships by a player, Herb Adderley, six with the Packers and Cowboys. Fuzzy Thurston won six with the Colts and the Packers. Most Super Bowls won by a player, Brady with his five. And then Haley with the 49ers and the Cowboys won five. Tom trying to break that tie tonight. Took New England two minutes and 45 seconds. To turn it into a three point game. This is Barner. And Kenyon Barner with a flag thrown. Barner, a guy whose cousin is the mayor of St. Paul. Gene Steratore. Only one penalty against New England tonight, four against Philadelphia. On the return, legal block in the back. Return team number 54. 10 yard penalty, first down, Philadelphia. So far, the difference in this game has been the trick plays going to the quarterbacks. First of all, Tom Brady, a little short arm, couldn't quite get there, and then Nick Foles making the biggest play so far of this season. And so far in this game, we have seen more passes to quarterbacks than punts. <laughs> We have only one punt in the game by Jones of the Eagles. This drive begins now with Blunt forcing his way through the middle for a gain of three up to the 18 yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Yeah, and you really get the feeling that the difference in this game could still be the play of this offensive line. The Philadelphia Eagles had a great first half running the football. And those big guys up front are as good as they can be. I think arguably the best in football. No sacks in the game. Foles. Eyes downfield, fires, and it's dropped. Nelson Aguilar going into the kicking net, covered there by Harmon. Incomplete, making it third down and six. Boy, that was one of those take your breath away kind of throws right there out of Nick Foles. You think he's confident? Look at this tiny little window. There's people all over this throw. <laughs> Should have had it. Third and six. Clement comes into the backfield. And swing him out. Pass goes up to the 23 yard line. Aguilar breaks away and picks up the first down. And plenty more. Got away from Johnson Batamosi for a gain of 16 yards. And it did not look like he was going to pick it up. Batamosi right here is in perfect position. If he makes the tackle, they're off the field. He misses the tackle. Game on. Big miss. Missing tackles in the open field on third down are absolute killers. Seen a couple tonight. Aguilar four catches 30 yards. Blunt turns it back upfield. Taken down by Lawrence Guy after a gain of close to five. Yeah, you have all kinds of people on the outside. Remember Kyle Valiant Noy in the beginning of the game. Now they put this extra offensive lineman in there. Let's go get an extra big body on him. You know you're going to have to work the edges of this New England Patriots defense. Now a few extra big guys in there to try to get that done. Blunt stays in. 
He and Ajay hit each carried six times tonight. Once again, bulls his way through. Breaking tackles again. Takes the ball into Patriot territory to the 48 yard line. Malcolm Brown makes the tackle. First down. Got to be able to handle the nose tackle. Here it is. Jason Kelsey going up against Malcolm Brown, their best along that defensive line. And I've got to think that something is going on with Jay Ajayi. Had the ankle issue this week, missed a bunch, but he is back in there now. Here he is. Six carries for 41 yards for him. Lines up deep in the backfield. Fake toss to him. Bulls fires low, incomplete. Smith, the intended receiver. Chung covering. Second down and 10. Butler still on the bench. One of the stories, and again, it was a coach's decision. Bill Belichick taking. Telling Michelle, hey, we, we put the players in. We think it best win the game for us. Go figure. The big hero three years ago with the interception of Russell Wilson, only playing special teams tonight. But also, remember, he came off the bench to make that play in that game. Yep. Yes, he did. Second down and 10 from the 49 yard line. Ajayi swings to the outside, starts to stumble, keeps his balance. Takes the ball to the 40 yard line. The former Dolphin setting up a third down and one for Philly. And Chung is down. Patrick Chung on his knee. And Sterator calls for the training staff. Patrick Chung, one of the toughest guys on this Patriots defense. But let's take a look at Jay Ajayi. He has one of the great jump cuts and then he just finishes runs. He has just been violent at the end of runs. It has been something to watch this team since he's come over what he's been able to do. But this is a big, big loss right now for the New England Patriots. Chung out, got pop. Wisniewski also limped off. Isaac Sayamalo goes into play left guard. So you're missing Philadelphia as their starting left guard. Chung is out. Jordan Richards comes in to spell him 37 for the Patriots, and it's third down and one. Sam Allen's the extra lineman chance. Warmack now comes in at left guard. And right now they have Stephon Gilmore, instead of playing his side, is now traveling everywhere with Alshon Jeffrey. Third and one. Fake to Blunt. Foles fires down the sideline. Caught first down. Zach Ertz. Having a nice night. Leading receiver on the team this year. Gain of 14. He's caught four for 47. Play fake it. Hit the swing. I, Doug Peterson is unbelievable. You know, every once in a while, you see somebody for the first time in a big moment. And you wonder. OK, he's been bold all year. Is he going to continue to play that way? If anything, Peterson's ramped it up a little bit more. Matt Patricia with that familiar red pullover. He's the coach of the Pistons within 48 hours. Of the Lions, of course. That would Le make Gary, news. That would, that would make a lot of news. <laughs> LeGarry Blunt to the 22-yard line. Look at season tickets to the Pistons, I'm sure. He's hoping to solve this thing because young Nick Foles, the story all week and the story since the injury to Carson Wentz is could he hold up? Emotionally, could he play against Tom Brady? This has been some showing by him so far in this one. So Wentz on the sideline. He hopes to be back for the start of training camp after the knee injury. Second down and six. Trips to the right. Foles dancing around and throws that one out of bounds. Trey Burton, the nearest to it, third and six. Remember how you know morose the entire city of Philadelphia was. They won a huge game against the Rams, but they lose the guy who might have been the MVP. Nobody really knows what Foles can do. Played well the next week against the Giants, not so well the next two games, but very well against Atlanta and. 
terrific against Minnesota. He's played in three playoff games, this being his fourth, and he has been tremendous in all of them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't turn the ball over, put the kiss of death on him. I think I'll shut up now. Third down and six. That line does a good job to pass into the end zone, and it is Corey Clement. Yes, touchdown. Two officials check with each other back of the end zone. 22 yards on what was a third down and six. Straight down the field. That's Marquise Flowers, a 4 5 sprinter out there on him. And how about how many times, Al, do we come into the Super Bowl and we say, who is it? Who's the unknown? Take a look here. Starts to lose control. And then that left foot is clearly out of bounds. But did he get the left foot down first with control? Takes it through the ground. Ball begins to wobble a bit. The previous play will be reviewed. Can you say definitively this last step? That's out. It's out, definitely. Under review. Back after this. Wow. After review, the ruling on the field stands. I'm stunned. Yeah, we looked at that. It, it looks like it can go either way. He begins to lose control, but he's got to get that left foot down there. They contend that he has control here, pins it with his arm, starts to come out. Clearly, the, the left foot, the second time it came down, was out of bounds. I give up. Yeah, well, I, mean, I don't know. I, I give up. I, I, if that ball is not loose in his arms when that last foot came down, I give up. I don't know the rule. Elliott for the extra point. So it stands on a third and six play. 7-18 left in the third. 29-19 Eagles. Temperature outside hovering around zero all day long. Nice and comfy. In U.S. Bank Stadium in its second year of existence. Home of the Minnesota Vikings. Take what you get against the Patriots, I guess. You bet. Kickoff is going to be brought back. Deion Lewis brings it back out to the 25-yard line. Back we go to the catch once more, Chris. To me, here's the question. When does he gain control of the football? When does this start? Does he have control there? I would argue no. That foot steps out of bounds. Obviously, close call, tough decision, made in New York. Actually, made here made in the stadium here. tonight. Al but River on. I would have called that incomplete. We've seen that called incomplete, I would say, the majority of time. From the 25 yard line. Gain a one here for Deion Lewis, taken down by Mills. It'll be second down and nine. When Matt Patricia watching his defense pretty much getting shredded. It's 408 yards tonight in two and a half quarters. Giselle Bunchen, Mrs. Tom Brady looking on, wondering if her man has another big comeback in him. Of course, that would not be man bites dog news. No. Brady throws and it's incomplete having to adjust on it was Hogan covered there by Corey Graham. He got a flag down. And a little conference here with Gene's territory got a hold it appears against the Throws defense the pass. holding defense number 95 five yard penalty automatic first down Michael Kendricks. Michael Kendricks right here. Watch the grab on the top end right there, and nobody can sell it like Gronk. I mean, you see him, and, you know, he's a big, strong guy. I do think he was definitely held there. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying 
Gronk is the best in the NFL at selling those holds. He'll be done an Oscar, but probably a Golden Globe. Deion Lewis through the middle. I tell you, it's amazing to watch how fast that defense closes. And Bill Belichick says, I need my guys to do this. Watch how this looks like this is going to be one of those jump cuts to the outside, a little gap in there. And things just close so fast. Benny Curry that time coming, ripping off the edge. This Eagles defense now, they're not wearing down. It's not happening the way it did with the Atlanta Falcons. They're still on their toes and fresh. Able to rotate seven guys in and out. Second down and nine. Brady fires over the middle, and that is caught near midfield, taken in by Hogan. Ronald Darby makes the tackle, and that moves the change. Look what happens for Tom Brady when he goes to that play action. There is just nobody underneath, and he is so quick getting that football out. It's buying him that extra tenth of a second. And every Super Bowl, it seems like somebody becomes the favorite, right? And now it's beginning to look like Chris Hogan is making some plays for him. Over 850 total yards oh, in the game and getting bounced down there by Malcolm Jenkins after a gain of four, second down and six. Watch Malcolm Jenkins. You want to know why he's the leader of this football team? Watch this play. You're talking about one of the toughest players in the open field to tackle in Deion Lewis. And Malcolm Jenkins has been making plays like that all season. He's been covering James White on passes. He's made a big play on a run stop. Won the Super Bowl as a rookie with the Saints. Second down and seven. Through the middle. Nice little hole there. And then stopping him shy of the first down was Mills setting up a third and two. Lewis to the 44. Patriots, one of those teams that maybe don't audible so much, but they call two plays in the huddle some. And when you see Tom Brady kind of give it the old, I used to say, think about it, look, but uh, <laughs> that means we want play number two now. Third down and one from the 45 yard line. Sees that motion back in, knows he has man coverage. Great protection again, down the middle, open inside the 30 yard line. Danny Amendola for a first down as the clock ticks down under four minutes to go in the third. Soon as he knew it was man coverage, goes right to Amendola. But this motion, James White comes back inside, and Malcolm Jenkins, who's played him in man coverage all day, goes with him. So Brady knows at that point he's going to his best man coverage option, and there it was, Danny Amendola. 377 passing yards for the 40 year old wonder. Play fake on first down to the end zone caught touchdown Hogan. Chris Hogan from 26 gets position on McLeod to turn it back into a one possession game. This is just unbelievable offensive football. You're going to see. Hogan is going to work to the outside and then back in. What a patient route this is. This is a veteran player understanding he has time. He understands that Tom Brady is going to sit there, look off the free safety, get him back in the middle of the field. And this is turning into fast break basketball mm -hmm. out here. Kaskowski for the extra point. Three and a half to go in the third, and Tom Brady has already thrown for 403 yards. 29 26 Eagles. It's the Super Bowl, so of course you've got Gwen Stefani, Blake Shelton here tonight. A left and a right and a left and a right, Floyd Mayweather. Jimmy Fallon, Bradley Cooper, longtime Eagle fan, guest of Jeff Lurie. What a game we are seeing 29 to 26, Philadelphia. And Kaskowski to kick it away. Yard deep down in the end zone for a touchback. 323 left in the third in a three point game in Super Bowl 52. 
going to snap it. And it's Trey Burton who throws caught. Foles touchdown. Wow. How do you figure? This play call has a chance to be remembered as one of the all time greats. They win the game and it will be 55 total points still have 18 minutes of regulation to play. Over 900 yards of total offense in the game. Chung and Wisniewski both injured on the last series are both back in the game. Jay Ajayi starts as the running back. Foles puts it in his stomach and throws to the sideline. Pulled in along the sideline by Aguilar. Perfect throw. Nice catch. First down. Gain of 24. This is another great adjustment here by Peterson. Because you end up with everybody thinks that RPO, those run pass options, that you're going to throw slants. So what have we seen tonight? Just the opposite. The Patriots line up a bit inside to take away those slants, and then Nick Foles goes to the other option that fade from the inside position. Peterson and Reich have really come up with a great plan tonight. I'll tell you what, though, we have not heard much from Alshon Jeffrey since they made the move and put Stephon Gilmore on him. He caught three early on. Foles fires, caught over the middle. Torrey Smith. Gets free down the seam and takes the ball to the 33 yard line tackled there by Devin McCourty first down. One more time just that RPO action and you can see that Nick Foles since he started running this play about two games ago as the playoff started his comfort level and his confidence has just shot through the roof. I don't think I'll ever get over what he did against the number one Minnesota Vikings defense two weeks ago and now he's doing it to the Patriots shredded them. Two minutes to the end of the period. Long to the outside. He get taken down there by big Malcolm Brown. Number 98 for a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Boy, Malcolm Brown is so good. What a great battle that is with he and Jason Kelsey going at it inside in the middle. But Malcolm Brown has long been the centerpiece to me of this defensive line. He has the quickness. Kelsey is quick, but he just fought through the inside gap there and made the play and was Newski back in the game as well. At the 32 second down and eight. Running back is Clement. End around. Aguilar. Tries to get the first down is very close. They'll give it to him at the 23 yard line. He's tackled there by Eric Rowe. Yeah we had not seen much of Nelson Aguilar on these reverse plays during the course of the regular season. But since the last game of the regular season and into the playoffs, he has three, four, five of those plays now, and they have been picking up some big first downs. Most total yards in Super Bowl history already with over 15 minutes to play, 955 total yards. Foles goes to the end zone and incomplete. Had a couple of receivers down there. He had Burton and Ertz, both tight ends. 34 seconds now, and it's second down and 10. Tell you who continues to impress me in this game, and that's Patrick Chung. I, I really felt like the two tight ends would be such a factor in this ball game, and one of the unknowns was Trey Burton, who really is an excellent route runner. We know what Zach Ertz can do, but. For the most part, Patrick Chung has had a good feel for both those guys. Yeah, we thought Burton would play a bigger role in the game, but he has thrown a touchdown pass. Yeah, other than that, in case yeah, you forgot. other than the biggest <laughs> play of the game, right. thank you. Second and ten. To Smith on the outside. A stiff arm there gets taken down by McCourty. third down back to the trick play now. Yeah you know what made this so interesting was when they went to the direct snap on fourth and one I thought Clement was going to just run power off tackle or something and then it was a circus after that. What a well orchestrated play that I, I just Doug Peterson has so much guts to try that in that situation. That's right off the street. Mm. Waning seconds of the quarter. 
third down and three. And they're going to run it out. That's the end of the quarter. So we played three exciting quarters. Philadelphia 29, New England 26, Super Bowl 52. Resumed after these messages from your local station. Live shots, two of the great sports cities in the country, Philadelphia and Boston. Al Michaels with Chris Collinsworth and Michelle Tafoya. Start the fourth quarter. Philadelphia Phil Basser, 99 years old. Eagle fan since they first started to play in 1933. He said, I thought if I ever lived to 100, I would <laughs> see this kind of <laughs> I bang down the field. So here we go. 15 minutes of regulation left. It's third down and three. And Foles was swinging out and getting blasted right now. Marquise Flowers hits Nelson Aguilar to make it fourth down. It's really a great job by Flowers. It looked like one of those motions, but he's going to stop and go back out. And then Flowers is going to come up and recognize what was going on. So let's just give him credit. His speed able to get out and make that play. That's a loss of eight. Turns it into a 43, make it a 42 yard field goal attempt now. Jake Elliott, longest field goal made by a rookie. In the Super Bowl, he would break that here, and he does. Inside the right upright. So. Just a few seconds into the fourth with a flag now down. There's a flag down. That was a fourth down and 11. Yeah, it looks like it's against the Patriots. Offside. Defense number 94. That penalty is declined. The result of the play, successful field goal. Timeout. Don't take those points off the board. Put them in at a fourth and six. Six point game. Some team will win some nice jewelry tonight as we take a look at most Super Bowl wins. The Steelers have won six, did that in a 34 year period, and the 49ers won five along with the Dallas Cowboys. And the Patriots also with five, trying to make it six in 17 years. The Steelers won their six in twice as many years, 34. Touch back here, and New England will begin its next drive from the 25 yard line. Last two Super Bowls against Seattle, and last year, of course, in overtime 370 yards, 127 rating. You know, we've said it before. Father Time has no idea where Tom Brady lives. None. None. And the other part of it is no sacks in this game at all. Now we've seen the Philadelphia Eagles. They got some pressure in the first half on a pretty consistent basis, but they didn't finish him off. You have to finish off Tom Brady. Brady now starts this drive, handing it off to Burkhead, the former Cincinnati Bengal. Picked them up in the offseason, picks up six here. Make it second down, let's call it uh, second and five, you know, five. And the other thing that Tom Brady has done so effectively here in this ball game so far is take advantage of those aggressive linebackers. 43% of these passes now in the first three quarters off play action. Burkhead again up to the 40 yard line. They mix and match. I mean, they have so many guys that can do so many things, get a whole bunch of Swiss Army knives, running backs, guys on defense, multiple roles. Nice double team on the outside right out here. Watch as Nate Solder gets the double team, then gets up to the next level and takes care of Nigel Bradham. Brady from the 39. Burkett again swings to the outside. His third run in a row. Good one here. Picks up five. Tackle there by Jalen Mills. Second down. Just when you think you know what the New England Patriots are going to do, they come out and start running the football. Rex Burkhead has really been known as much as a receiver when he got in the game. Remember him against the Denver Broncos? We saw him, played so great out there catching passes. So let's see if they're setting the hook here just a little bit and start looking for Burkhead as a receiver. 
those three runs on the last three plays his only runs of the night keep him in with a fullback Devlin swing it out quickly to Hogan nice catch there and a good tackle to stop him well short of the first down well, it's amazing what that field goal felt like in that last drive it felt like a huge success for the New England Patriots I mean that's the way this game has been going and now Jim Schwartz needs to return the favor on this third down. He has not blitzed very much at all and when he did he got burned I don't expect it here. Three receivers set to the left. White is in the backfield that's Amendola. No Moving. And Amendola backhands it for a first down run out by Jalen Mills converting. On a third down. Nobody does this better right here. When they put Amendola in motion and you see Jalen Mills go across with him right now, right now, Tom Brady knows exactly where he's going to throw the ball. His best receiver in the clutch, in the big moments, in the fourth quarter, Danny Amendola. Burkhead back in. Brady fires open at the 30 yard line. Amendola again. Danny Amendola and the ball comes out but the play was whistled dead. McLeod is there. Man that an offensive line fabulous job. Yeah no question look at how quickly Nate Solder got out there on Barnett and that gave Tom Brady plenty of time even though there was some pressure he just casually steps up and now they're starting to do that play action pass against a single high safety where Amendola is going across the formation and because the protection is there Brady's winning the battle. He's barely been touched tonight. Swings it out here. Amendola again and that's going to set up a first down and goal. You know it's funny Chris we both know that the Giants won those two Super Bowls because of all of the pressure they were able to put on Brady. So everybody's talking about well Philadelphia can do that with their four guys but they haven't tonight. They haven't and they haven't at least in part because of the pace. The pace just wears defenses out. It doesn't give you a chance to get set. It doesn't give you a chance to run exotic looks and Brady has seen everything everything whatever you show him he takes it and extrapolates it out and makes it into a big play. No sacks for either team in the game. Second down and one. Picking up the first down, taking it to the three. Goes James White. Down to 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. We saw it in the Super Bowl last year, but when Tom Brady can get a game into the fourth quarter, all those sacks, all those pressures, all those hits start to go away because the defense wears down a bit. And I think it's even happening to Philadelphia. I didn't think it would. But the interior pressure of these tremendous football players, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Tim Jernigan, all those guys in there, they've been non-factors against Brady. Ninth play of the drive. And Brady will throw, and it's a low throw, and it is incomplete. Head there for James White. You say, boy, that was a low throw, but in reality, it was exactly what Tom wanted to do. Only his guy has a chance at this ball. Just one hop in there, but there's no way he was going to give those two defenders a chance for it. You miss it low, no big deal. Come back here on second down. Second and goal, over a thousand yards in total offense tonight. 567 for the Patriots. And Brady lost one for Gronkowski, reaching for it, touchdown. They look unstoppable right now. And New England has its first lead of the game. Gronkowski beats Darby for the touchdown. One more time, Al. Amendola goes across the formation. And what does that do? That signals man coverage. And you know you have Gronkowski with a tight split being able to go to the fade route in the corner of the end zone against a much smaller cornerback and Ronald Darby. It's a chess game. And they will have their first lead of the game if they make the extra point. But tonight, 
You don't know. Yeah, and we've Plenty seen of these kickers look <laughs> yes. a little unsteady on both of these logos in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there were some issues for these kickers, and there were a lot of people out inspecting that area before the game, so we'll see. Yeah, there it is. The 52 logo. Boy, that can get into your head. So the extra point to give New England its first lead of the game. Puts it down. And the Patriots are on top. 33-32. Mrs. Brady happy. Rock with a spike. Win them by one. Well, the most valuable player voting is now open. Go to NFL.com slash MVP or the NFL app on your mobile device. And you can vote for the Super Bowl 52. MVP. Have an idea who might be in front at the moment. Win or lose? Not, well, just at the moment. <laughs> at the moment. 33 32. It normally goes to somebody on the winning side. A lot of football to be played. 9 22 left in regulation. That's the mantra do your job. Somewhere over there, somebody has to make a play. One turnover, one sack, one something. They have to make a play. Won't be here because the touchback will take it out to the 25-yard line. Dante Skarnecki is going to turn 70. He had retired. They bring him back to run the offensive line. One of the great assistant coaches in recent NFL history. There's a lot of greatness associated with the Patriots. I'm not sure that guy's name is quite as well known as everybody else's, but when he left, the Patriots were a different team. When he came back, the Patriots were what we're seeing tonight. Trying to win back to back Super Bowls, trying to win three out of the last four. Jay Ajayi is the running back. It's Philadelphia begins this drive from the 25 yard line. Play clock at one. A jockey bangs his way up to the 29 yard line. Gain of four, second down and six. McCourty in on the tackle. Yeah, anytime you watch Doug Peterson's play calls, he takes advantage of two great athletes on this offensive line Jason Kelsey at center, Lane Johnson. You'll see those two guys pulling, misdirecting, leading the way on so many of these run plays. Tremendous athletes playing up front. Ajayi stays in, second down and six. Foles buying time. Deep downfield, one on one, adjusting but incomplete. Torrey Smith and Eric Rowe, one on one downfield. That's going to make it third down and six with eight and a half to go. Well, James Harrison's a guy they're going to get the education from, but I have to say, Halapulavati Vitae on the outside for the Philadelphia Eagles has grown as much in the last month as any player I have seen in a long, long time. Yes, Harrison got him a little bit there, but that young man right there has turned his game around. And he replaced the all pro Jason Peters when he went down with an injury at the midpoint of the season. Third and six. And whistle before the snap. First charge timeout, New England. A 30 so second New, timeout. New England takes a timeout. Timeouts are precious, but whatever it was, they wanted to get the, the right personnel, the right scheme in there. Take it now, third down and six upcoming. Yeah, that's one that whatever reason they probably got stuck in man coverage and didn't like what they were looking at and didn't want to give this one up. They get off the field here the way that Tom Brady and this offense is going. You have to think the Eagles have problems. We haven't seen them stop them yet. No. 21 points for New England in the second half. I'll tell you Alshon Jeffrey needs a place. 
Stephon Gilmore has tied him up since he's made the move out there. They empty the backfield to go four by one. Foles fires over the middle, and that is caught. Big first down. They all become big right now. Zach Ertz makes the catch. First down. Now they played the lurk coverage. They had a lot of coverage in the middle of the field with the second slant in. Goes out and then back in. They drew that working coverage in the middle of the field away and gave Ertz the chance for the one on one. Foles 315 yards through the air tonight. Blunt back in. Give it to Blunt. Not much. Up to about the 39 yard line. Second down and eight. Boy, you do not see the Garrett Blunt go backwards like that very often. That was some play coming down the line. Wasn't sure exactly who it was, but for Matt Patricia, that now gives him a chance. Right down the line, and there we go. That's Lawrence Guy. The one guy we haven't heard a whole lot from tonight is Trey Flowers, and I would have said he, along with Malcolm Brown, were their two best along that front seven. Agreed. Talking about a guy with two and a half sacks against Matt Ryan in last year's Super Bowl. Clement is the running back. Play fake. Foles drops it off underneath to him, and Clement tries to charge his way to a first down. He's going to be stopped a little short for the moment. Chung able to prevent the first down to make it third down and one. One of the really underappreciated parts of the New England Patriots in this secondary is their ability to tackle in the open field. Some teams don't practice that so much. I'm almost always amazed early in the season you will see these safeties having to make those open field tackles time after time and they made it in a big moment right there in the Super Bowl. Third and one with a Jai in the backfield. Smith in motion. Pass caught on the outside by Smith but he cannot get to the line to gain. McCourty with the tackle and it's fourth down. Big play there by James Harrison. They were in trouble. The veteran saw this thing coming across and got just enough of Torrey Smith here to give his coverage a chance to get across the field and McCourty able to make the tackle. But that was all James Harrison. What a heads up play veteran play right there. For the moment they're going to leave the offense on the field. Do you dare have to. Well Doug Peterson you got 548 picking down. The ball is at the 45. It's fourth and one. The play clock is down to four. And they go for it. And Foles under pressure throws caught just enough for the first down. Zach Ertz forward progress nets him the first with five and a half to go. Nice pick play inside those big tight ends working together on that one. Two tight ends on the left and Ertz coming around the other way. One of the most dependable pass catchers in the National Football League didn't drop a pass all season. And when they needed it most he hangs on. Six catches 56 yards for him. Well you have to start paying a little bit of attention to the clock now too. Under five minutes to play. And a whistle here. And a timeout for the Eagles. Might be set up for a fantastic finish. 452 remaining in regulation. It's a one point game. Eagles at their own 47 yard line. Now you know it was interesting by going for it on fourth down there. For Doug Peterson you'd almost prefer to have given New England the shorter field. Even if they score a touchdown it's an eight point game right and you're still going to get it back. You couldn't have them bleed the clock. This is crazy for the Philadelphia Eagles obviously best case scenario now establish your running game milk the clock a little bit but you can't imagine a scenario where Tom Brady's not getting this back. Peterson knows no fear. We've seen that in evidence plenty tonight. Blunt is the running back. LeGarrette Blunt into a lot of traffic in of a yard maybe two a little shy of the first down second and long. 
But that really gives you a, some options now. Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator, to make that first down run stop. Now you have everything on the table. James Harrison, the old Wiley veteran out there on the left-hand side. Does he have one trick up his sleeve? We've seen him with some late moment success. Late in games to win them with big sacks. Second down and nine. Falls flushed out, throws, and that is caught. And staying in bounds is Aguilar. And that will move the chains. Covered by Chung. Good catch. James Harrison was coming off the edge, and Nick Foles had no choice. He had to escape, get out, but he has made these throws on the run tonight. Harrison now starting to size up Vitae with this bull rush. Just get ready. He's going to give him a changeup. He's going to grab that outside arm and bend it. And we'll see. I've seen this change up before. From the 43. Four man rush. Full fires caught over the middle. To the 22 goes Nelson Aguilar. Another first down. I, I just can't tell you how impressed I am with Nick Foles and what he's doing. He stared right down the barrel. There was another tiny little window to get that one in with plenty of coverage all around it. And yet Nick Foles just continues to play like he's been doing this his entire life battling against the likes of Tom Brady. Meanwhile, Chung is down on one knee for an injury timeout. Tory Foles and little Lily at seven months old with the headset on playing with one of the toys there and there is dad with 307 what a night he has had 352 yards 1081 yards tonight so far most in any NFL postseason game ever. Nick Foles, when asked questions about his wife and child this week, got choked up and couldn't finish the answer. Said, she is my rock, my wife. Patrick Chung is out. Johnson Batamosi stays in. Harmon at safety now on first down. Aguilar chased out by Harmon. Chris, you know what's so great about this game is that the game has been terrific from start to finish. I mean, last year people say, well, great Super Bowl. Overtime, it was 28 to 3. The game has been relentless. Just relentless. I mean, as great as the halftime entertainment was, and it was fantastic, I, I, this game has been as good as Justin Timberlake. Start to finish. Only one punt all night. Very few penalties as well. That was a big force out of bounds right there, though. 237. Ball at the 14 yard line. Through the middle. Jockey backing up. Gets the ball down to the 12 yard line. And the Patriots are going to take a timeout. So they've now taken two. They have one left plus the two minute warning. Which makes everything on the table here. Let's say that they go down inside and get inside for a first down. Boy, things start to get really interesting from there because of that lost timeout early in the half by the Patriots. But how much time do you really need for Brady to work his magic again? And anyway, first things first, second down and seven with the ball now at the 11-yard line. Depends on when the first down happens. Yep. Yeah. Clement in the backfield. Big night for him, 100 receiving yards. Take it to him, throw to the end zone, and it's incomplete. A little pushing and shoving there with Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver. Covered by Gilmore. Collins' roommate, second, third down and seven. This has been the story right there. Gilmore has been fantastic. They did not start the game with Gilmore following Jeffrey. He made a few big plays, made the touchdown. They've switched back. And he is 
taken over the game on the outside. Huge play here. Of course, they can take the lead with a field goal. They get a touchdown. Almost certainly go for two to try and make it a seven point game. First things first. Third down and seven from the 12. Zach Ertz out wide, one on one. Clement flares out to the right. Caught over the middle and into the end zone. Zach Ertz for the touchdown. And again, all you can think back to now is the Jesse James play with Pittsburgh. Does he complete the process? I don't know. I, that ball comes loose. He does catch it. But at what point is it loose on the ground? Gets inside McCourty, who stumbles. Ball pops out. I'm not even taking a guess. No. It, it as he was rolling over, it looked like that's when the ball the came flight. out. Does he control it when it gets off the ground? There is. Does the ball actually make contact with the ground? He has control of it here. Ball pops out. Al Riveron is the head of officiating. He's I you know I'm sure in Pittsburgh they're going are you kidding me if they call Jesse James back what are they going to do with this one I think they have to overturn it now the question was was he a runner was he going to the ground in the process of the catch if he were a runner and crosses the line and dives it would have been a touchdown but if he's still a receiver going to the ground in the process of the catch I think this is incomplete yep if I had to guess, I'd say it's going to get overturned. This drive began with 9.22 on the clock, taking off seven minutes. Now, if it gets overturned, it's going to make it fourth down. And in all likelihood, the field goal unit comes in. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I cannot wait for them to change this rule. Hopefully by the end of the game. Oh, my goodness, that is so close. Because he had control on the ground for a second and then he rolled over and then it popped up. So was it the ground that popped it up or did he just lose control of it? Well, you you knew that the catch no catch thing was going to rear its ugly head before this night was done. The question in my mind was, was he going to the ground in the part of the catch? If they, if they rule him a runner, it, it stays as a touchdown. The whole thing is, is do you rule runner. him a runner at Football this point? Move. And I, but they call him a runner. He, I, he breaks I, the plane as a runner. If if that if it stays, that's going to be the reason. I think he was running and diving for the end zone. But what constitutes going to the ground? It's always close. It's, it's subjective. But it's always if you're a runner, it's one thing. If you receive it, it's another thing. If they rule that he was a runner, it's going to stand. After review, the receiver possesses the football, becomes a runner, breaks the plane of the goal line. The ruling is confirmed. It is a touchdown. They have to go for two. Julie Ertz, soccer star, just watched her husband get into the end zone. Here we go. Well, we know what their first two point conversion play was. It was the reverse. They scored the touchdown on the pass to Foles. You know they have at least three in their hip pocket. We're going to see number two right here. Two twenty one and a five point game right now. That man will be back shortly. Burton comes in motion to the inside. Foles rolling, throwing, and it's incomplete. Tended for Clement. He was covered there by Van Noy, so it remains a five point game. It's a good play here by Van Noy. He's made a few tonight. Forced him up underneath and didn't give a real angle for Foles to make this play here. 
Foles looked back for his inside receiver. That option not there and just took a shot. Ooh, a little early contact on that one. Was he a runner? Would he have gone to the ground? I think there was contact on the part of McCourty there. In the process of that play, if McCourty wasn't there, would Ertz have been going to the ground? That's a hard call. Very. But they ruled him a runner at that point, and the call stands. You knew there would be something crazy at the end. You knew it. Always. And now guess what? Tom Brady with 221. Might as well have a month. 221, the two-minute warning, and a timeout. He's got all day. Three possessions for New England in this half. All three have resulted in touchdowns. <laughs> what a game. Whew. 11 game winning drives fourth quarter or overtime five in other words all of the games that he has won the Super Bowl games he has won he's had a comeback does he make it a half dozen three straight 75 yard drives for Tom Brady for touchdowns can he do it a fourth Wide right in the backfield. Starts with a pass to the outside, Gronkowski, and he will step out of bounds. Bradham stops the clock. Brady and Gronkowski, after Gronk had had only one catch for nine yards in the first half, whole different story here. Missed the early seam and then just got hot. Really took over. Anytime it was Gronk one on one. The ball was going to him, just as it does in all big situations, and I have no doubt in my mind it'll happen again. Second and two. Uh -oh. Brady gets hit. The ball is out, and Philadelphia has it. Derek Barnett comes away with it. Brandon Graham was one of the guys who got in there. And it's New England's only turnover of the game. And it's the first sack of the game. Just like the New York Giants back in the day, taking an outside pass rusher in Brandon Graham and putting him inside against the guard, Shaq Mason, pays huge dividends with the first sack fumble of the game. No question, that ball is out. That stands absolutely no question. The rookie Barnett, their number one pick out of Tennessee. Number 73 is reporting as an eligible receiver. 73 is eligible. So 209. New England has a timeout. The clock can stop twice. They can take a timeout. You can also have the two-minute warning. They can limit Philadelphia to a field goal. It would still be a one possession game. It would be eight points. New England would be out of timeouts. 209. Ball at the 31 yard line. Keep it on the ground. Make them take the timeout. LeGarrett Blunt to the 28 yard line. 203. That took six seconds. And there's your final timeout. It will stop once more at the two minute warning. Brandon Graham has been their best all season. At getting pressure. Here he goes from the defensive tackle position. Ordinarily, he plays outside. They have been working him more and more on the inside for that very reason. Get your best pass rushers on the field. That allowed Chris Long to get on the field, Barnett on the other side. And it has been so frustrating all night long for this Philadelphia Eagles defense. And yet, with everything on the line, they finally get to Brady. <laughs> Nick Foles on the sideline. Brady checking the replay. I've seen this movie too many times to think this game is over. Mm -hmm. Second and seven. Swing to the outside. And still charging. 
is LeGarrette Blunt. So that takes us to the two minute warning. It comes with officially 156. It'll be third down and five on the other side of the break in Super Bowl 52. One Michigan Wolverine on the left, the other on the right. Graham creates the turnover. Brady gives it up. Here it is again. I'll tell you, Brandon Graham has a reputation of relentless effort. <laughs> and Jeffrey Lurie said, yeah, we're playing the Patriots. This is not over. Yeah, he was in the movie business. You're right. He's seen this movie before, too. Now, do you have the guts to throw it one more time, or are you just taking that clock? Third down and five. See what Peterson calls here. Keep it on the ground, give it to Blunt, and stuff him at the 28-yard line. So that's Butler. Now they can take the clock all the way down to a little over a minute and try to make it an eight-point game with a field goal attempt. Yeah, with a field goal, with a rookie kicker, and Jake Elliott, you miss it. You're going to place the ball out around the 35 yard line something like that and turn it over to Brady with a chance to win. How much pressure could be on this kick for Jake Elliott. Well, this rookie kicker in his second game as an Eagle kicked a 61 yarder at the gun to beat the Giants back in week three. So Peterson says take the clock all the way down and take the timeout right here with 70 seconds. There it is, the Lombardi Trophy. Does it make its way to Broad Street? The main drag in Philadelphia? They have had some parties for championships there, but I don't I've been around Philadelphia football fans. This might be the biggest one of all. They bring this thing home. This is the capper. I mean the Phillies and the Flyers and the 76ers have all had big time parades. This would be the capital. You can assume nothing here. The snap, yep. the hold, you know whatever pat, whatever rush the Patriots have, you're gonna see it right here. 46 yard attempt. Lovato to snap it. Donnie Jones to hold it. And it is good. Big time. 65 seconds. So Brady has to get it all the way down the field and then a two point conversion. You just cannot imagine the amount of pressure and to rotate that ball with the laces straight back. We saw that in a playoff game before and a missed field goal to calmly spin those laces around and give the young rookie a free swing at it. It's a great job by Jake Elliott, but nice job by Donnie Jones, too. Mm -hmm. 41 to 33. Robert Kraft. His team has gone to nine Super Bowls. It's the same, this one. same situation, right? It's last year. They needed eight. Yep. They go down, they score, they get the two point conversion, they win it in overtime. So Elliott to kick off. Deion Lewis, and here he's a guy. We saw him on a Sunday night in Denver. Run one back for a touchdown, and this is returnable from the six-yard line. Uh -oh. And he's going to flip it back to Burkhead, but he's going to get wrapped up and knocked down back at the seven-yard line. That is a really interesting call. You go for the home run shot, I guess, but that play almost took the ball right out of Tom Brady's hands. Going to come with the reverse, back the other way, short kick, gave him an opportunity. But oh, baby. Yep. And you took several seconds off the clock as well. I think that was part of the reason they kicked it short. They wanted that clock running. So from the nine, he's got to go 91 yards and convert a two pointer. And Brady begins by slinging one to an open receiver, and that's Hogan, but he can't make the catch. Got free down the sideline, second down. Chris Long with a little pressure here on this one, and the significance now of being able to protect the boundaries. We've seen that in the playoffs with Stephon Dick's play. 
You need to keep them in bounds now because it's going to be very difficult to get up there and get that next play going. Chris Long, son of Howie, trying to win back to back Super Bowls. Did it with the Patriots last year. Second and ten. Brady under pressure, flushed out, slings it across his body and incomplete. Intended there for James White. It'll be third down and ten. It was Derek Barnett putting the pressure on. I can remember in the Super Bowl, I can't even remember which one it was now, but there was a play at the end of it where Brady was sort of in this situation. I think it was against the Giants. He sort of looked right, looked right, pump fake, moved a little bit right, and then threw a go route back across the field to Randy Moss freaking down here, and it was close. That, that was the first game against the Giants. Brady now under pressure almost gets sacked incomplete pocket collapsed they're down to their last play to try to keep it going fourth and ten Fletcher Cox finally with the pressure that made a difference so these big guys it's taken them all game but back to back their two best pass rushers their two best players on this defense coming up big Chris Long has been a factor too. This is it for New England. Fourth and ten from the nine. Brady fires, and that'll keep it going. Amendola up at the 20-yard line, but the clock keeps on ticking. What a catch. Yeah, tremendous. Now Brady's got to get up there. Clock it here. 26 seconds now. And still 78 yards away. Well, you desperately need something to at least give you Hail Mary position. And I'm sure that Josh McDaniels has to be thinking, what do we have to do to win this football game? We've been going up and down the field. But here it is. You need something around the 50-yard line to just have a few shots into the end zone. Ready? Short pass. Gronk was just trying to get out of bounds and he does. Now you got 20 seconds. Ball at the 33, 67 yards away. Still time to throw something over the middle if you had to. Hustle up, spike it, and still have a shot at the end zone. And that would go down in history, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Brady. Now he's going to throw short. Gronkowski Whoa. needs to get out of bounds and does. There he is. Boy, oh boy. Almost pulled a little Stefan Diggs routine there. Wow. Stayed in bounds. That took seven seconds off. Now you got 13. Boy, when he dipped inside, <laughs> took your breath away. But here it is. And you've got one of the great rebounders in football history running down the field, Gronkowski. It's going to get a shot at the very least for the jump ball, but not before the Eagles talk about it. 30-second timeout. The Philadelphia Eagles, a guy whose name we need to mention here, too, is Howie Roseman, the general manager who did a ph phenomenal job. Free agents, trades, worked the salary cap. There he is, the guy who was kind of the odd man out when he lost a Power struggle with Chip Kelly a couple of years ago. Brought him back in. Phenomenal job building this this team. Absolutely is. I kind of thought that we might end up seeing one of the receivers come in and play DB at the end of this game in case you got the jump ball, but nobody in. Now they got three DBs back at the 20. Brady fires and it's almost picked <laughs> off. That took four seconds. That's Darby. Intended for Philip Dorsett. And you've got nine seconds. I would rather have two shots in the end zone here than that nine yards. Mm. And then you pray for, if not a completion, at least maybe you get a defensive pass interference call. There is nobody anywhere close to as tall as Rob Gronkowski. I would jam him with the line of scrimmage. I would not let him run freely off this ball. Brady under pressure. 
Escapes the sack. Launching one for the end zone. It's a jump ball and it's incomplete. And Grock was there. And time runs out. This is the end of the game. And for the Philadelphia Eagles, the long drought is over. Finally. Last championship, 1960, pre-Super Bowl era. And the Philly fans, the dream has finally come true.